was asked by Our Lady of Fatima in her apparition at Tui. The effects of this consecration at a crucial moment in history were incommensurable. The fall of the Berlin Wall, the fall of the Soviet atheistic empire, the opening of the countries under the Iron Curtain to faith and religion, to the church and to evangelization in a peaceful manner. Indeed, the great miracle of the 20th century occurred. The new Marian Lepanto, prophesied by St. John Bosco, precursor of Fatima. Of course, those who do not have faith cannot accept God's intervention in history. But there is not a better explanation for these qualitative changes in the socio-political scenario than the fulfillment of God's promise of salvation to His people through His beloved Mother. To entrust our person, our family, our nation, our world to God through the Immaculate Heart of Mary is to prepare ourselves to offer God our being and possessions, all that we were, all that we are, and all that we will be, our virtues, our strengths, and our weaknesses, in an oblation of love, imitating Jesus Christ, who totally gave Himself to the Eternal Father at the cross. We become true disciples and apostles of Jesus, following Mary's steps. Entrustment is the most important spiritual lesson at Fatima. To repair the damage caused by sin, we have to offer ourselves to the Good Lord, we have to become other Johns, other beloved disciples that will restore God's majesty and glory diminished by the sins of the world. We will retrieve the offenses against His love. We will repair the terrible damages against the mystical body of Christ, the church that suffers and bleeds so much for so many of her children. This is the infinite spiritual power of entrustment based on Christ's merits, the superabundant treasures of grace and mercy mentioned in the apparition of Tui. Through His passion, death at the cross, and resurrection, and through our collaboration and participation in His grace and mercy, our souls will be loved by God in a special way with the love of predilection. On June 13, 1917, Our Lady of Fatima said to Lucia, Jesus wishes to use you in making me known and loved. He wishes to spread in the world the devotion to my Immaculate Heart. I promise salvation to those who embrace this devotion. Their souls will be loved by God with the love of predilection, like flowers placed by me before His throne. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. So, it will be for us too. Let us entrust ourselves and all we care for to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The world is fragile. We must handle it to the heart of our spiritual mother. We must confide our faith and that of humanity to divine providence. The statue of the Immaculate Heart of Mary at Fatima has a globe hanging below her heart. It symbolizes the world and its faith entrusted to her maternal heart. It is a perpetual reminder to her and to us. Do not be afraid. Our faith is entrusted to her maternal heart. And the heart of a mother is the safest place to be for a little child. Those who do not believe that the petition of Our Lady of Fatima was answered by Pope John Paul II when he consecrated Russia and the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on March 25, 1984, at St. Peter's Square, are either short of their trust in God's mercy or are ignorant of the facts accomplished by this consecration. As this consecration was duly made, the Soviet Union collapsed a short time after without the shedding of blood. Eastern Europe was opened to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Berlin Wall crushed 
making possible the reunification of Germany. All of them are signs of the beginning of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, announced at Fatima. Indeed, a terrible nuclear world war was prevented as the Cold War ceased. In the years 1986 to 1987, a nuclear war was close to a beginning according to secret documents made public by intelligence agencies of the West and East. Pope Francis consecrated his Petrine ministry on May 13, 2013 to Our Lady of Fatima as he commissioned Cardinal Polycarp, Patriarch of Lisbon, and the Portuguese Bishop's Conference to entrust his papacy to the Immaculate Heart of Mary at the Shrine of Fatima. Then, on October 12, 2013, he celebrated the Marian Day at St. Peter's Square, a new Marian Pentecost for Marian associations pertaining to the Pontifical Council for the Laity to focus on the new evangelization of the world as the most important mission of the Universal Church. Then, on October 13, 2013, the Holy Father renewed the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary before the statue of Our Lady of Fatima brought from the little chapel of apparitions at the Fatima Shrine. This renewal of the entrustment of the faith of the Church and the world to God's grace and mercy through the Immaculate Heart of Mary occurred on the 96th anniversary of the miracle of the Son at Fatima. It is very important for the Church to renew this spiritual ephemerides with great faith calling to conversion all in most need of God's mercy. What is still missing is our total correspondence with God's grace our absolute steadfastness to serve God, our dynamic action to make other people know and live the message of Fatima in their own lives. Let us be brave and acknowledge our own faults. After all, the world will not be saved without our own collaboration. The act of consecration to God through the Immaculate Heart of Mary is a symbol of the will of the Church and of all human beings of goodwill to come closer to God, to accept His laws and commandments in their own lives. There is no magic in the words of the consecration. What we must seek is that the words of the consecration will be a reality in our own lives. Then, and only then, we will experience the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in its full splendor. In this time of COVID-19 crisis, the enemy cannot be seen. So how can we fight it? We are at war or in a battle with an invisible enemy. Our Lady once said at Fatima, Continue to pray the Rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war because only she can help you. In the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, all of us Filipinos, on June 12, 2021, will pray as one nation, a united nation. Jesus and Mary, we offer ourselves to you, and this Pueblo Amante de Maria, we give to you in faith, hope, and love. We extend to you our hearts. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. As we recite the words of this antiphon, with which the Church of Christ has prayed for centuries, we find ourselves today before you, our Mother. We who make up the body of Christ present in our land, Recite the words of this 
present acts of consecration and entrustment in which we gather, first of all, the hopes and anxieties of our Filipino people at this moment of our history. Mother of our people, we who rejoin in the name Pueblo Amante de Maria, Bayang Sumisinta kay Maria, you know all our sufferings and our hopes. You who have a mother's awareness of all the struggles between good and evil, between light and darkness, which afflict the world today. Mother of our people, accept the cry which we, deeply moved by the Holy Spirit, address to your heart. Embrace with the love of the Mother and Handmaid of the Lord, our people and our land, which now we entrust and consecrate to you. For we are truly concerned for the earthly and eternal destiny of every individual among us and for all our people. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities. Behold, as we gather before your immaculate heart, we desire the Church of the Lord in our land. Join in heart and mind with all our people, isang bayang Filipino, to unite ourselves with the consecration which, for love of us, your Son made of Himself to the Father. For their sake, He said, I consecrate myself that they also may be consecrated in the truth. We wish to unite ourselves with our Redeemer in this consecration for the world and for the entire human race, which in His divine heart has the power to obtain pardon and to secure reparation. The power of this consecration by your Son, our Lord, lasts for all time and embraces all individuals, peoples, and nations. Thus also it embraces our people and our land. The power of this consecration overcomes every evil that the spirit of darkness is able to awaken and has in fact awakened in our times, in the hearts of men and women in human history. How deeply we now feel the need for the consecration of our people in union with Christ Jesus himself. For the redeeming work of our Redeemer must be shared in and by the world and by our own people through the church. We turn to you, Mother of our Redeemer and our Mother. Above all creatures, may you be blessed. You, the handmaid of the Lord, who in the fullest way obeyed the divine call. Hail to you, who are wholly united to the redeeming consecration of your Son. Mother of the Church, enlighten the people of God along the paths of faith 
hope, and love. Help us to live in the truth of the consecration offered by Jesus, your Son, for the entire human family and for us, the Filipino people, and for our beloved land. In entrusting to you, O Mother, our people, your Pueblo Amante de Maria, we entrust to you this very consecration itself, placing it in your motherly heart. Immaculate heart, help us to conquer the threat of evil, which so easily enters and takes root in the hearts of people today and whose immeasurable effects already weighed down upon our country and seem to block the paths toward the future. From hatred, violence, conflicts which divide and destroy our people, deliver us. From sins against human life from its very beginning, deliver us from the demeaning of the dignity of the children of God. Deliver us from every kind of injustice in the life of society. Deliver us from readiness to trample on the commandments of God. Deliver us from the loss of awareness of good and evil deliver us from sins against the holy spirit deliver us accept o mother of christ this cry laden with the hopes and burdens the sufferings of which one of us and of all our people help us with the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome and conquer all sin. Individual sins, social sins, and the sin of the world. Sin in all its manifestations. Let there be revealed once more in our own history as a people the infinite power of the redemption, the power of God's merciful love. May it destroy the power of sin and evil among us. May it transform consciences. May change hearts to the likeness of the heart of Jesus and your own heart. May your Immaculate Heart reveal for all in our land and through all the world the light of hope, O Mary, Mother of Jesus and our Mother, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Amen. to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, as we recite the words of this antiphon with which the Church of Christ has prayed for centuries we find ourselves today before you, our mother. We who make up the body of Christ present in our land, recite the words of this present act of consecration and entrustment in which we gather, first of all, the hopes and anxieties of our Filipino people at this moment of our history. 
mother of our people, we who rejoice in the name Pueblo Amante de Maria, Bayang Simisinta kay Maria, you know all of our sufferings and our hopes. You who have a mother's awareness of all the struggles between good and evil, between light and darkness, which afflict the world today. Mother of our people, accept the cry which we, deeply moved by the Holy Spirit, address directly to your heart. Embrace with the love of the mother and handmaid of the Lord, our people and our land, which now we entrust and consecrate to you, for we are truly concerned for the earthly and eternal destiny of every individual among us and for all our people. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities. Behold, as we gather before your immaculate heart, we desire the Church of the Lord in our land, join in heart and mind with all our people, isang bayang Filipino, to unite ourselves with the consecration which, for love of us, your Son made of himself to the Father. For their sake, he said, I consecrate myself that they also may be consecrated in the truth. We wish to unite ourselves with our Redeemer in this consecration for the world and for the entire human race, which in his divine heart has the power to obtain pardon and secure reparation. The power of this consecration by your Son, our Lord, lasts for all time and embraces all individuals, peoples, and nations. Thus also, it embraces our people and our land. The power of this consecration overcomes every evil that the spirit of darkness is able to awaken and has in fact awakened in our times in the hearts of men and women in human history. How deeply we now feel the need for the consecration of our people in union with Christ Jesus himself for the redeeming work of our Redeemer must be shared in and by the world and by our own people through the church. We turn to you, Mother of our Redeemer and our Mother. Above all creatures, may you be blessed, you the handmaid of the Lord, who in the fullest way obeyed the divine call. Hail to you who are wholly united to the redeeming consecration of your Son. Mother of the Church, enlighten the people of God along the paths of faith, hope, and love. Help us to live in the truth of the consecration offered by Jesus, your Son, for the entire human family, and for us, the Filipino people, and for our beloved land. In entrusting to you, O Mother, our people, your Pueblo Amante de Maria, we entrust to you this very consecration itself, placing it in your motherly heart, Immaculate Heart, 
help us to conquer the threat of evil, which so easily enters and takes root in the hearts of people today, and whose immeasurable effects already weigh down upon our country and seem to block the paths toward the future. From hatred, violence, conflicts which divide and destroy our people, deliver us. From sins against human life from its very beginning, deliver us. From the demeaning of the dignity of the children of God, deliver us from every kind of injustice in the life of society, deliver us. From readiness to trample on the commandments of God, deliver us. From the loss of awareness of good and evil, deliver us. From sins against the Holy Spirit, deliver us. Accept, O Mother of Christ, this cry, laden with the hopes and burdens, the sufferings of each one of us and of all our people. Help us with the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome and conquer all sin, individual sins, social sins, and the sin of the world, sin in all its manifestations. Let there be revealed once more in our own history as a people the infinite power of the redemption, the power of God's merciful love. May it destroy the power of sin and evil among us, May it transform consciences. May it change hearts to the likeness of the heart of Jesus and your own heart. May your immaculate heart reveal for all in our land and through all the world the light of hope. O Mary, Mother of Jesus, and our mother, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Mary. Our main presider for this Eucharistic celebration is the rector and parish priest of the parish of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, Reverend Father Elmer Ignacio. Let us prepare ourselves for the celebration. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we gather around the table of the Lord to listen to His word with burning hearts, and to allow Him to open our eyes as He breaks bread with us. We ask Him to stay with us as we experience the darkness of this crisis, Manilo Biscum Domine. Today, as one people, we who rejoice in the name, Pueblo Amante de Maria, Bayang Sumisinta kay Maria, make our consecration and entrustment to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She knows all our struggles, sufferings, and our hopes with a mother's awareness and concern. 
we turn to her, the mother of our Redeemer and our mother, the handmaid of the Lord, to help us conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. As, in, as at Cana in Galilee, with her prayers, we trust that joy and celebration will return after this trial. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who prepared the fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that once died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who have reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors of Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does He deal with us, nor does He re requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us.
Frühling zu Lug. Each year, Jesus' friends went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it, thinking that he was in the caravan. They journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him. They returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. sa ating uh, minamahal na Vicar Foreign, Father Ikio Ramos, sa ating mga kasamahang pari, kailan niyo naman, si Father Nick, ang aking pong katuang kasama, si Father Howard, ang ating pong mga uh, kabikarya, si Father Franz, at saka si Father R.A. Ganon din sa inyo. Magandang umaga pong lahat sa inyo lahat. No? Kinakabahan ako. Uh, alam bakit? Ano? May natutunan ako sa araw na yun. Actually, two weeks ago, no, ang sabi ng bishop, no, Father, ikaw na ang magmisa, bahala ka na sa consecration. Ang sabi ko, pa pwede ho ba akong mag ng ibang obispo? Ang sabi niya, bakit? Ba't pa ayaw mo? Ikaw nga ang, ikaw nga ang tinatalaga ko, ipapasa mo pa. Ano? Anyway, nandito na tayo. We are doing our consecrating, no? Are we consecrating ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary? But what do we mean by consecration? No, the word to consecrate means to make holy. Noon paman tayo ay pinabanal. Kailan tayo pinabanal? Whenever we receive the sacraments, no, we are made holy from the beginning in our baptism. We are made holy. Di ba? Okay. Lahat tayo pinabanal sa pamakita ng sakramento ng binyag. Hindi tayo ang nag-consecrate sa ating sarili. Ngun, kundi ang Diyos ang nagpapabanal sa atin. Noon, hindi na ito isang human act alone. But it is primarily the act of God, the gift of God. God consecrated us no by giving us this baptism and all the sacraments no that we receive we are consecrated no tayo pinababanal ng dios so what do we mean by consecrating ourselves to the immaculate heart of mary no na pinagdiriwang din natin sa araw na ito nakapistahan niya ng kalinis-linisang puso ni maria kahapon ang pinagdiwang natin ay ang kamahal-mahalang ano, puso ni Jesus. At ano yung kabuluhan ng kamahal-mahalang puso ni Jesus? That the very heart of Jesus refers to His love for us. Mahal ka ng Diyos. No? ba? Diba? We celebrate how God loves us from the beginning until now. 
and He never wavered in that love. Iyon yung pinagdiwang natin. Iyon yung pinaalala natin kahapon. Jesus loves us. Today we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And what is that Immaculate Heart of Mary? It is not her, her love for us, but primarily the Immaculate Heart of Mary is her love for God, for the Father, for His Son, Jesus Christ. That is her love no, that we celebrate. No, yung pag-ibig niya sa, sa Diyos. Yung pag-ibig niya sa kanyang anak. Kaya nga doon sa cross, ano sinabi sa kanya? Babae, narito ang iyong anak. Anak, narito ang iyong ina. No? Okay, minam- sas- siguro sasabihin ni Jesus, Okay, you love me, but this time, mahalin mo rin ang iyong mga anak. Okay? So primarily, the immaculate heart of Mary is her love for His Son, her love for the Father. And what is that heart of Mary? No? That the heart of Mary, kung mapasin natin sa ating mabuting balita ngayon, no? after nasagutin siya ng kanyang anak, sino nanay sa inyo? Taas ang kamay ng mga nanay. Pag sinagot ka ng anak mo, ano sasabihin mo? No? Sumasagot ka, sumasagot ka, sumasagot ka. Aba, anak lang kita, sasagot ka, sasagot ka ba? Papa, pa. Sasagot pa yan anak lang kita. Di ba? Oh, sasaktan ka ko minsan. Sinagot ako ng anak ko. Ayan. Di ba? No. Eh, pero ito makulit. Eh, bakit ika? Nung kinagalitan mo, sasagot, sasagot ka pa. Sige, 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 sige. Sabagot ka, sabagot ka. O, ayaw mo ngayon magsalita. Oh, napaka. Di mo maitindihan ang nanay. Di ba? Pero, okay. Dito, sinagot si, sinagot ni, ni, ni Jesus ang mahal na ina. No. Nung sinabi ni, ni Maria, Son, bakit po ginawa ito sa amin? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Ang ba't mo hinahanap? Ah, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Eh no, ginawa ng Maria, na ating bahal na biring Maria. Okay? And his mother kept all these things in her heart. Okay? So what is that heart of Mary? No? That very heart of Mary is a heart who is listening. A heart who listens. From the beginning, with the, with the uh, coming of the, with the, with the visitation of the angel, ano sin, announced with an angel, ano sinabi sa kanya? No? Aba Maria, heal Mary. Ano ginawa ni Maria? She listened. Okay? She just listened. No? And what is that listening? No, that heart of Mary that is a listening heart, no, is a listening heart in order to know. Okay? Ito nga yun yung, ito yung nawawala sa atin eh. Marami sa atin naka-headphone. Marami sa atin ang iniisip kung ano yung gusto natin. But have we ever listened to God, to our family? To know. Mary listens to know what? To know the will of the Father. To know the plan of the f- Father. She listened to know. Okay? And then sabi nga dito, she kept it in her heart. Bakit? No? She listens not only to know, but to understand. But that understanding is not instant. No. Yung series of events from the beginning, the Annunciation, until doon sa paanan ng Cruz, it is a journey of understanding the plan of God. Hindi niya nauunawaan, ngunit open siya na sa bawat pagbubukas ng mga events ng nangyayari sa kanyang anak, she tried to understand a listening heart to know and to understand and that is why that listening heart who is ready to know willing to understand now let her to obey the will of the father she listened 
in order to obey. She listened not only to obey, but to submit herself to the will of the Father. Mangyari nawa sa akin ayon sa wika mo. And so, what does it mean to consecrate ourselves in the Immaculate Heart to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is to join our imperfect love as a human person to that human love of Mary which is no, a perfect offering of love, response of human love to God. Kung baga may pagkukulang tayo, mayroon tayong kahinaan, itinatambal ngayon natin, Mama Mary, no, isama mo yung akin sa iyong pagmamahal sa Diyos. Isama mo naman ako sa iyong pagmamahal sa Diyos. Kulang yung pagmamahal ko eh. Okay? Fill up what is lacking in my love, in my response to God. And this is what consecration is all about. Let us be holy. Let the Lord make us holy again. Let the Virgin Mary help us journey with us in, cons- in making us grow in that holiness. Kaya sana hindi lamang matigil yung ating consecration by prayers natin, kundi by our own witnessing. And this is precisely the heart of Mary. The whole person of our Blessed Virgin Mary you know, is the execution of that response. Her life speaks of this offering of Mary to God. May our Lady, may the heart of Mary bring us together, make us holy again, make us whole again sa gitna ng krisis na ating pinagdaraanan. Amen. Let us pray to God, our loving Father, that following the example of Mary, we may always seek and do His will. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may practice the humility of Mary in willingness to serve God and men. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may we find a welcome abode in the hearts of people as He found a well-prepared dwelling place in Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the true spirit of prayer may deeply penetrate the hearts of people, that they may hear the cry of the poor as if permitted the whole being of Mary's immaculate heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are sick in mind and body may find healing and consolation through the powerful intercession of Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dying may look up to Mary as their source of strength and comfort as she stood by the cross of her son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our heart, let us express our own intentions. God, our Lord and Master, cleanse our hearts that we may receive Christ, your only Son, in the spirit of Mary's faith and obedience. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Reminder for those who will receive the Holy Communion, please wait for the go signal of our ushers in charge of organizing the queue. To all our followers via live streaming, let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel. Oracho Imparata, Uncle sa COVID-19. Manalangin tayo. Amang mahabagin, ipagsanggalang kami sa COVID-19 na dulot ay pangamba at sanhi ng kamatayan. Tunghayan mo kami na may pagmamahal at pawiin ang aming takot sa sakit at kamatayan. Ibalik ang aming pag-asa at patibayin ang aming pananampalataya. Gabayan mo ang mga taong binigyan ng gampaning humanap ng luna sa sakit na ito at pigilin ang paglaganap. Salamat sa bakunang natuklasan sa tulong ng iyong paggabay. Basbasan mo ang aming pagsisikap na gamutin at tapusin ang pandemya sa aming bansa. Itaguyod mo ang mga lingkod ng kalusugan upang ang kanilang pagtulong sa may sakit ay lakipan ng kanilang galing at pagmamalasakit. Manatili nawa silang malusog sa isip at katawan, matibay sa kanilang sinumpaan at ligtas sa karamdaman. Panalangin namin para sa mga nagkasakit ay dagling kagalingan, para sa mga nag-aalaga sa kanila ay kalusugan, at para sa mga yumao ay buhay na walang hanggan. Sa panahong ito ng pagsubok, kumilos nawa kami sa kabubuti ng lahat at tulungan ang mga nangangailangan. Patibayin nawa kami ng aming habag at malasakit sa isa't isa at ihatid kami sa pagbabagong buhay at kabanalan. Hinihiling namin ito sa pamagitan ni Yesu Kristo kasama ng Espiritu Santo magpasawalang hanggan. Kukupin mo kami sa iyong pagkakandili o mahal na ina ng Diyos. Huwag mo kaming siphayuin sa aming mga pangailangan Bakos ipag mo kami sa mga panganib at kasamaan, o malawalhati at pinagpalam birhen. Amen. Ang mahal na birhen ng Fatima, ipanalangin mo kami. San Jose, ipanalangin mo kami. San Rafael Arcangel, ipanalangin mo kami. San Roque, ipanalangin mo kami. San Lorenzo Ruiz, ipanalangin mo kami. San Pedro Calungsod, ipanalangin mo kami. San Francisco at Santa Jacinta Marto, ipanalangin ninyo kami. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with this blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go now in the peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina.
Santa Dei Genitrix. Oremus, Omnipotens Sempiter Deus, qui gloriosa e virginis matris Maria e corpus et animam, o dignum fili tui habitaculum e ficime reretur, e Spiritu Santo cooperante preparasti, da ut cuius commemoracione leitamur, e ius pia intercessione abis antibus malis, et a morte perpetua leberemur, per iundem Christum Dominum Nostrum. Divinum Auxilium Maneiat Semper Nobiscum.